money and the people, the way they bought theaters. I'd and like to address that. And then I, I think, uh, if you don't mind, is that cool? Uh, the, I think you're going to find the, uh, in the worst theaters, you're going to find the worst films. You're going to find the cheaply made films. The better made films are being, uh, uh, the cheaper theaters can't afford to uh, book into their theaters. I mean, it's just a matter, it, it turns into dollars and cents that uh, the better theaters, there are very excellent theaters that show X-rated movies uh, and present X-rated acts, if you will. And those are the, the better theaters with the better movies, and it costs more to get in them. Do you feel someone who patronizes one of the films that you make should feel guilty about doing so? Well, I'm not sure, because I never went to an X-rated film before I was in them. And I sometimes ask myself the same question, how would I be had I gone beforehand, before I had been, in fact, involved with it? Well, see, we talked about uh, a bunch of upcoming appearance maybe around the station here. W. Bose, you've been signing autographs during the, the breaks here. Many of the young ladies of my acquaintance will say in private to somebody they know, yeah, I've seen one of those. But they wouldn't say that at a cocktail party. They're a little, they're a little ashamed of having gone to see well, an X-rated movie. Well, hey, sex is still rife with guilt. And in some cases, uh, that might not be a bad thing. I think it adds a certain amount of titillation to sexuality. But at the same time, I don't know how healthy it is. But they, we're not going to avoid it. We're all children of the century, you know. And there's guilt attached to sex, at, at least at this point. It's going to take a, uh, more than a few hundred more years to, to, to uh, estrange sex from guilt. Well, if you feel there's guilt attached to sex, do you feel, Bobby, guilty about what you do? Well, uh, I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are some. Uh, on some level, uh, there's a, a piece of the pie. There, there, there's guilt. Sure, it well, has to be. For me, in as far as my imagination always conjures up alongside of everything I do, it's just always going on in there. My guilt is Victorian. If, if I just put it in a setting and I, and I enhance my sex with my guilt. Uh, to, uh, to answer the other question, unfortunately, women still aren't allowed to do and talk about many things they want to. They're still... Mm -hmm. they're still um, checking out their conscience and trying to come to grips with a lot of things that are either handed to them and they don't know how to deal with all this power, this newfound uh, area of freedom. It's just, it's just Well, you do a lot of things sexually that uh, both of you, that many Americans do not practice in their private lives. You're into oral sex on film. You're into group sex on film, triads, uh, groups of four. We talked about that a bit with... Uh, Sherry Kahn, Human Sexual Therapy, I think was the title of the book. Mm. <clears throat> Do you feel good about, about expanding your own sexuality in that direction? Uh, Do you I, ever feel I'm guilty for having love not... with three or four guys at the same time? No, no, not on film. I don't, in my private life, it's, it's a, just a very straight life. I, I take it as far as I want to. I still indulge in oral sex and... Are you a sex it, goddess in your private life? Yes. She certainly is. Well, I'm, I'm not, I don't know about it. I think she's every woman and every man system. are sex goddess and god to each other. And, well, I don't know and if everybody's aware of the fact that, like, uh, we're, we live a monogamous lifestyle. Are you, well, I, we're, I suppose we're, that was the direction I was, the, the, yeah. the, the question was aimed more. I don't more. know whether the public's aware of that. That, that we live together. That we live together in pretty in much uh, for all practical house. purposes. <laughs> we're man and wife. We're not married we, legally, though, but... We're not, um, but we've been together for three years, and uh, it's a monogamous relationship, uh, and... You uh, don't bring all the guys and the gals over oh on no, Friday no, nights? Oh, no. No. Oh, no, no. we're... Why not? If you do it for the film, why don't you do it in your private life? Well, I... I don't... I, see, I've been, I've been let down a lot in my sex life with men, and... You know, I, Why, I explored... Thanks, I explored... <laughs> <laughs> I explored sex way before I got into the films. I, I was a promiscuous young girl. I was always looking for love. Um, sometimes you're afraid to just say, hey, hug me. Can you take me out on a date tonight and just hug me all night? I really need that. Instead, women feel, uh-oh, well, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to be a woman. I'm going to be sexy, and I'm going to 
make love in the back seat of a car. And I mean, how many Not times? Not good actress. I, you got great facial expression. How many, you know? <laughs> how many times did I go out and get really let down? So finally, I found a man that makes me happy, that I make happy, and I don't feel like dabbling anymore. I, so basically, the two of you then are sex film stars. Mm-hmm. But you don't let that carry over into your private lives. Uh, for the most part, no. No. Well, why not? It, it would seem as though if, if ethically you are going to do such and so in the film, it's I just think, for money. But I think no. No, well, well you see. Well, I've learned a lot sexually, haven't you, through the well, films? Well, yes. I, I mean, you live out of certain. You live out of a great many fantasies. It's lucrative. But I, by the same token, I mean, you, you right now you have to act in films. When when I go up for a film now, I have to read for a part, as I would if I went for a commercial. We're both members of Screen Actors Guild under uh, other names. Ron Reagan was president of the Screen Actors exactly. Guild. Exactly. Right? Okay. God bless you, Ron. <laughs> and, and oddly enough, uh, you see, I think it's really a matter of supply and demand. I think if you're not, really, what it boils down to is if you're not getting enough, you want it all the time. But if you have enough, it be, gets back into its proper perspective, and it's not, it's not something that you wake up... Uh, you know, drooling for. So you view yourselves then more as legitimate actor and actress that do this as part of the acting and ac actress profession. Exactly. That's what it certainly has become for like, me. I'm yeah. a talk show host at work, but when I go home, I'm not a talk show host. No, but mm -hmm. you like to be entertaining and intelligent, and you probably discuss some a of the things that you. If you will. Yes. Yes. I'm sure if, if you came to my house, I wouldn't ask you the questions that I ask you here. Well, you, you might, know. and you no, might but not. I mean, but right? I mean, but you know, normally uh, a talk show host does a different thing at work than he does at home. You do a different thing at work than you do at home. Oh, yes. Yes. Not completely oh. different. Like I said, we're still, sen we're both very sensual people. We enjoy our sex life. We have sex probably at least once a day. We love sex, and we love sex together. Uh, I think we'd be threatened. I would be threatened if Bobby started having other affairs and taking what limited time we have away from our business and he started spending it on other women. Well, sure. and, and if giving. you're living together as man and wife, aren't you married? I would like to be married. Bobby doesn't feel I the need ha for I have, I have. Oh, here we go. Big fight yes, on the top. Here we go. Big <laughs> fight. I brought my gun. I, mean, <laughs> I have hang-ups. I grew up with Henny Youngman. If everybody, I don't know if everybody's familiar with Henny Youngman. He was a take my wife, comedian. please. Yeah. And I grew up with that. Take my wife, please. And. Uh, I was married once upon a time on paper, and it was uh, the, further, the furthest thing from a love relationship. For, I don't know, for me, I'm hung up somewhere along the line. As soon as I get married, if I, as soon as I was married, I, I immediately begin imitating unconsciously, take my wife, please. That's what it amounts to. Do you feel like uh, either a male prostitute I, or a female prostitute? Sometimes. Why? You, know, you say you feel good about what you do. And why? Why do you feel as though? I'm not saying prostitution is bad. You, maybe you. Maybe that's the first thing we have to understand. I. I don't think prostitution. Well, wait a minute. Uh, what, prostitu sex for se money. Ah, sex for money is a bad thing. See, prostitution. The word, I suppose, if we looked it up now, it is a bad thing. And people prostitute themselves for oil and <laughs> for. Uh, Mm -hmm, to, to, mm -hmm. to become president of a business or to get a good position in life, and I don't mean a sexual position. But I don't think sex for money is bad. I think a lot of people need just such a therapy because their sex life is not working. Uh, their time off reason, work yeah. and everything, they're not getting the amount of sex they need. And sex is essential. As Tim, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing sex films for six years. When you first started, were people asking you for autographs? No. What I'm asking you is, has the uh, has society changed? Yes. It's Young men working here feel very comfortable coming in and saying they want your autograph, and uh, autograph pictures are laying over here. Oh, it's beautiful. Up at the theater, we had some people come in, married couples. Uh, I mean, it was ju it's just marvelous. I mean, it really is. Uh, you know, terrific. Uh, yeah, they're holding hands the and they're yeah. kissing during the film, little smooch lovebirds. It's so cute. Yeah. I love when I see two people relating and happy as opposed to fighting, like, no, you do that and you do that and take out the garbage and... No, and, enjoy, and, and enjoying all aspects of whatever they're viewing, if, if, you know, if there's a sexuality. I mean, sex is a kind of, you know, it's an uncomfortable... Uh, sex, is, sex is definitely an uncomfortable situation. Nobody is comfortable 
doing sex, really. I mean, what? I mean, you may be comfortable psychologically, but it's an exciting experience, and you're not comfortable. When you're excited, you're not comfortable. Excitation is not comfort. And, uh, hey, they get excited, and then they laugh, or they feel for the people. I mean, because there's more talent involved in these films now. And, you know, a lot of the public comes in, and they appreciate it more. Are you going to real acting? Do you think that we're going to get to a point where we have... When we talked last week about you folks coming on as guests and some rather spirited conversation, uh, people saying that, that the movies you make, the hardcore films, are just sex films, and that's all. Are you getting into some acting oh, in them to where the acting will maybe at some point in time, well, you're members of the Screen Actors yeah, Guild. Well, maybe that's some... changing drastically right now. I mean, you're seeing it happen right now, or some people are seeing it happen right now. Uh, it's drastically changing, yes, very okay. definitely. Oh, they, they cast you in a role? Well, let me break for a commercial. We'll be right back after this. They came at a time rotten tall and proud. Three discount chains on a mission to rid the town of ornery, unwanted higher prices. Maze, Bellscott, Community. Three discount chains working together to do a job that just had to be done. Oh, I can see the varmints now. Okay, let them have it with both barrels. Blast them with the dollar savers. Well, they blasted higher prices right out of town with dollar savers like these for only $2. 12 quart plastic pail, plastic laundry basket, decorator metal tray, nine pair shoe rack, bulletin board, 17 piece tool set, 10 piece screwdriver set, 13 piece drill set, or a rubber mallet. Your choice, only $2 each. The higher prices gang has bit the dust. We've gotten back to discounting the way it used to be. The dollar savers at all 17 Mays, Bell Scott, and community discount stores. Bell Scott, located at 1001st Avenue in Rock Falls. This is Tom Coleman reminding you to tune in at 12.30 this Saturday as the Iowa Hawkeyes host the Bruins of UCLA direct from Iowa City. Hear all the play-by-play -play action right here on WBOC News Radio 14. A lot of you probably think if you can't afford to fly, you can't afford to go. On the contrary, it's a short hop anywhere in the country if you dial direct after 5 p.m. Ten minutes to San Diego, under three dollars. Ten minutes to Tampa, under three dollars. Ten minutes to New Orleans, under three dollars. Ten minutes to Seattle, under three dollars. Northwestern Bell, long distance. Even if you can't get there, you can still be there. Visit at least 10 minutes, anywhere in the country, about $3. Tonight from Davenport, you can visit Fargo for 10 minutes, just two eighty-five plus tax. 383-7040, the number. Again, our guests this morning are Samantha Fox and Bobby Astor, the Triple X movie stars, and we're talking about the Triple X movies. Your questions are welcome. A couple lines are open. Good morning. You're on WOC. I have a couple of questions for you, guests. Um, the young lady mentioned that she was rather promiscuous, I believe, uh, in, before she started making the movies. I'm wondering if she um, knows if the others that are in this business have been promiscuous uh, in their life before. Also, is there a media age that goes to these movies? And who writes the scripts for them? And I'll hang up, okay? Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Well, uh, your first question, uh, do I know whether other people have been promiscuous? I don't know too many people that are in this business that uh, will readily admit what I did, uh, as well as the fact that s some of the people don't even know themselves that well. A lot of people, unfortunately, in this business are in it for just money or perhaps to support a drug habit. So they don't even have feelings of promiscuity. They're dealing with a whole other set of circumstances that they have to feed and... and well, can I interject there? Yeah. Are you on drugs? 
Oh, absolutely not. How I'm many, high on life. How many young men and women doing this are on drugs, supporting a drug habit with it? Uh, not many that can continue having a career of any sort, just as in any business. They burn out quick. They burn out well, quick. Hey, okay, hey. now go to the audience. What's what's the audience you see when you're up on stage doing this, Bob? Oh, it's a, it's a cross section <clears throat> of humanity. Is it dirty old men? No, not at all. Is yes, it dirty old you know, women? I shouldn't say not at all because yes, to some extent, and uh, and uh, not at all. I mean, it's incredible. I get uh, stopped in the street by, if you will, fans of all shapes, sizes, and descriptions from... Uh, uh, there are fans of your movies. You talk to some of Martin Hall here. There are fans <laughs> of your movies. Oh, yes.